morning, everyone. Morning. My name is Neo. We are going to read the book of Haggai 2. Encouragement and promise. On the 20th first day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the, po the prophet Haggai. Speak to the Zerubbabel, son of Sheltai, the governor of Judah, to the high priest Joshua, son of, Je son of Je Jehozad, and to the remnant of the people. Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing by comparison? Even so, be strong. Zerubbabel, this is the Lord's declaration. Be strong. Joshua, son of Je Jehozad, high priest, be strong. All you people of the land, this is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you, the declaration of the Lord of armies. This is the promise I made to you when you came out of Egypt. And my son's spirit is present, is present amongst you. Don't be afraid. For the Lord of armies says this. Once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations will come and I will fill the house with glory, says the Lord of armies. The silver and the gold belongs to me. This this is the declaration of the Lord of armies. The final glory of the house will be greater than the first, says the Lord of armies. I will provide peace in this place. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, church. That is a beautiful sound that we get to hear this morning. My name is Lesejo. I am one of the elders of this church fellowship city, and this morning I get the privilege of bringing the word of God to you. This behind me is a picture of Kusile Power Station, so a, a coal-powered plant that is being built by ESCOM. It will appear. It will appear just behind me. So it is a coal-powered plant that is being built by ESCOM. The goal would be to ultimately replace the older stations with something that's newer, something that does not break, something that pumps electricity. So it currently breaks down more than the older stations. So one could say the station was being built by the wrong power, by the wrong energy. This is under the power of corruption, greed, inflated prices, um, cadre de deployment with bad design that needs to be redone, fixed, and mismanagement of the project. So the power or energy to build Kusile was the wrong kind, as they tried to build a power station that would replace the older ones, and it's taking longer and longer. This morning, we will see the people of God building the temple of God. They expected the temple of God to look and be like the original temple, the first temple that was built by Solomon. They expected it to be a place where people come to encounter God in his power. So the people are discouraged. The people are discouraged because there are real obstacles to the building of this temple. It doesn't look like the old temple. It doesn't function. It's, it's not going the right way. So the people are discouraged. The people want to stop. However, Haggai brings them encouragement to persevere. Encouragement to continue building the temple of God, to continue building Jerusalem. Encouragement that as, as they build, they are building by a special kind of power, the power of God who is with them. That's what we'll see this morning. So three Ps to, to get us going this morning. So the presence of God, the power of God, the promise of God. Three points and we will be out of here this morning. The presence of God, the power of God, and the promise of God. Let's pray and ask God by his spirit to help us understand his word and be changed by it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that this morning we are able to gather together as your people to sing songs of praise and worship, to fellowship, to hear your word. I pray that this morning that you would remove all distractions, 
all those things that happened in the past week, the things that are to happen in this coming week. We pray that you would remove all these distractions, the lunch that is coming, all the things that still need to happen. Help us to focus on you. Help us to hear the Holy Spirit speak. Help us to hear the Holy Spirit encourage, challenge, or rebuke us this morning. Let your word flow through me and your people hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning we're looking at Haggai chapter 2. So you'll see the Bible project image behind me. If you remember the intro from last week, then you will remember the book can be split into four sections. So you'll see four blocks behind me. You will see Haggai 1 as one section, Haggai 2, 1 to 9 as another section. That's what we're looking at this morning. And then Haggai 2, verse 10 to 19 is another section, is another message that Haggai brings to the people of God. And Haggai 2, verse 20 to 23 is the last message in the short two-chapter book. So this morning we're only looking at chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. Next week is our final sermon in this series. So we're going to merge those two last messages together. So Haggai chapter 1 happens 70 years after the destruction of Jerusalem. The Babylonian Empire has, has collapsed and the Persians, the, the Babylonian Empire has collapsed Jerusalem and the Persians are the new superpower of the day, 70 years later. That's when this book is, is being written. So the Persian Empire allowed the capture and exile Israelites to return to Jerusalem, which was previously destroyed so that they can rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the temple of God. So the Persian army says to the Israelites, go and rebuild the Jerusalem and rebuild the temple of God. They're led by Joshua, who is the high priest, and Zerubbabel, who is from the lineage of David, as well as Haggai and probably Zachariah go with these people to go rebuild Jerusalem and the temple of God. So if you missed the sermon, feel free to catch it on YouTube or your favorite audio podcast platform. So the, the main message from Haggai chapter 1 is, fix, is to fix the priorities of the Israelites. They have let distractions and opposition stop them from building the temple of God. Some of those, those, those distractions were good, like farming, which was working to provide for their families, was building houses so that they can live and build their families. So Haggai says that in everything we need to check our priorities. Haggai doesn't say it is wrong to farm or to build uh, houses, but he is saying that we need to check our priorities. Haggai says that in everything we need to check our priorities. We need to build the kingdom of God first. The work of, of their hands was yielding no results. There was a drought because they were prioritizing their own wealth, their family, and work. The Israelites hear the message of God from the prophet Haggai. They turn They change their priorities. They begin building the temple of God. God is with them and he blesses the work of their hands. One month later, chapter 2. So from the moment they've turned, they start building. They're building this foundation. They're working. One month later, Haggai comes with another message. This message. So two. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 9 is a message that Haggai brings from God. We will see through these nine verses that the work of building the temple of God is God's work. We will see that it is God's work. It is not Haggai's or Zerubbabel's work or Joshua. The work of building the kingdom of God is not mine or is not Reno's work. It is God's work and we partner with him to build the kingdom of God. The people that, that have gone to build the temple of God are partnering with God to rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the temple of God. We will see that the power by which we build the kingdom of God is by the power of God. So our first point, the presence of God. Let me read the passage again for us. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak, and to the remnant of the people. Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it seem to you like nothing by comparison? Even so, be strong. Joshua, son of Josedek, high priest, be strong. All people of the land, be strong. This is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you. The declaration of the Lord of armies. 
This is the promise I made to you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit is present among you. Don't be afraid. For the Lord of armies says this, Once more in a little while I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations so that the treasures of all the nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of armies. The silver and gold belong to me. This is a declaration of the Lord of armies. The final glory of this house will be greater than the first, says the Lord of armies. I will provide peace in this place. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. That's the word of God. Verse 13 of chapter 1 says that I am with you. What great assurance for the people of God as they start building this temple of God. They heard this already, that God is with them. and They started to see the work of their hands. Verse 13 of chapter 1. I am a father of two. Whenever my two girls are afraid or discouraged, I tell them to not be afraid. To not be discouraged because I am with them and will help them through it. This builds in them a confidence that is visible. How much more would assurance from God our Father be? That is why we see these people, the people, uh, the Israelites now being active in building the kingdom of God, building the temple of God, because they know that God is with them. That is what we see from chapter 1. In chapter 2, we see that the building has slowed down. Um, A month later that this building has slowed down, we see this because Haggai is again encouraging them to get on with building the kingdom of God. And we see this because Haggai says they should work in verses 4. Even so, be strong, Zerubbabel. This is the Lord's declaration. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedek, high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land. This is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you. The declaration of the Lord. So why has the temple, why has the temple building stopped? Verse 2 gives us that that answer. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to the high priest, Joshua of Josedek, and to the remnant of the people who is left among you, who saw this house in its former glory. How does it look to you now? Doesn't it seem to you like nothing by comparison? So the temple of God that stood before the Babylonian Empire destroyed it was built by Solomon. Opulence is one word that could describe this temple. It was luxurious. Gold and precious stones were used. It took years to build. This is the first temple. So some of the Israelites are old enough to remember this temple. So they're building this new temple, the second temple. And they're dis- disappointed because it's not going according to plan. It is not looking like the old temple of God. It's like the movie Matrix Revolutions, which was created in 2003. After the original in 1999. So the movie series depicts a future where humans are trapped in this matrix. A world or simulated reality where machines taking over. So the third movie was not liked as a sequel. So the third movie was was spoken not in as glowing terms as the first one. So a movie critic says, The Matrix res- Resurrections is a waste of time and money for fans of the series. It's a betrayal that deserves to be ignored and forgotten as soon as possible. Or maybe some might remember Men in Black, Men in Black International without the original Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Um, they were seen too expensive to bring into this uh, latest one now starring Chris Hemsworth and Tess Thompson. This also has a number of reviews which show that the remake is not like the original. So the Israelites look at this remake, this rebuild that they're building, and it does not look like what they expect it to look like. They would rather not have a temple if they can't make it as the first temple, as they remember. So Haggai encourages them. He calls them to be strong. More importantly, The encouragement from Haggai is that their strength should be in the Lord. He says the presence, says work for I am am with you, the declaration of the Lord of armies. So for I, I am with you, that shows the presence of God. God is with them. They can take strength in that and continue the work of building the temple. We are like Israelites. Sometimes we look over the fence and are discouraged. Maybe we look at other churches in their mega buildings. We look at their building and wonder if our building matters. If it's useful, maybe we could do without it. 
That was the posture of the Israelites. They're looking at this temple, and it's not like the first. Haggai says, continue the work of kingdom building. God is with you. His presence is here with you. Maybe we look at worship. We look at other churches. They have smoke. They have speakers coming from the roof, moving lights. This morning we had wonderful worship. But sometimes, like the Israelites, we may look at other pictures and think it's not the same. Haggai says, continue the work of kingdom building. The temple, uh, God is with you. God was with us this morning as we worshiped, as we sang that our God is greater, as we sang that our God is stronger, that he is higher than any other, that our God is healer and is awesome in power. Our God, that's the words we used, our God. He is our God. He is with us. So continue the work of kingdom building. That's the encouragement that they get from Haggai. Maybe when meeting, some are seeing people discipled and they're discouraged because they don't see fruit when they disciple others. But Haggai says, no, don't be discouraged. Keep on the work of kingdom building. Maybe when reading the Bible, it's small or sometimes the pages are torn. It's not a big study Bible or one with multiple translations and helper notes. But Haggai says, don't be discouraged. Haggai says, don't stop. Continue the work of kingdom building. Continue the work of building the temple of God. Our second point, the power of God. For the Lord of armies says this, once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations so that the treasures of all the nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of armies. The silver and gold belong to me. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. Haggai, 6, Haggai 2 verse 6 is the only verse that is referenced in the New Testament from this book. So Hebrews 12 verse 26 to 29 says, His voice shook the earth at that time, but now he has promised, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This expression, yet once more, indicates the removal of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what is not shaken might remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful by it. We may serve God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. So Haggai, in verse 6, says, once more, in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and earth. Haggai here is referring to a time when God descended on Mount Sinai and, and he brought the law to Moses. That's, a, that's what he's referring to with once more. This has already happened before, but it's going to happen again. The earth shook then. There is a promise from Haggai and the Lord, speaking through Haggai, that this will happen once more. Now, when it happens again, it will include the heavens. It will include the sea and the dry land shaking. Also nations and the treasures of the nations being affected by this. So this refers to final judgment. When Jesus Christ will return as judge. When Jesus returns, he will be coming to establish a new heaven and a new earth. Every knee will bow. All nations will bow. Those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for their sins because they need a savior, they will bow their knee with great joy. There will be great happiness as they enter into eternal life with Christ. Christ has died so that we don't have to. Christ has faced and taken on our sin on the cross, so we are seen with the righteousness, his righteousness. Okay, so those who, who believe in Christ crucified will kneel with great joy at the, at the second coming when, when Jesus returns. Those who don't know Jesus, they will still kneel but will face eternal separation from God. They will face an eternity in hell. There will be great sadness and fear. The good news is that if you don't know him, he may be knocking at the door of your heart and he wants to be in a relationship with you. He wants, to be, he wants you to be redeemed, to be adopted, to be holy and blameless before him. So when Jesus returns, all those things that you thought were valuable will not be as valuable. All the treasure that you stored up here on earth, they belong to God. Because we are only here for a moment and we'll be reunited with God. These things will not save you. No money or gold will save you. It all belongs to God. That's what we see in verse 8. Prophets of God strengthen and encourage the faith of people. That is what the prophet does here. This is, that is what Haggai was doing. 
That is what we should see here. We should see the power of God. God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. God made a way to fix our broken relationship with him. God controls all of nature and God owns everything. All the gold and silver belong to him. The power of God will shake the heavens and earth and create a new heaven and earth. For those who believe will get new heavenly bodies. Haggai is saying that they should remember the promise about the return of Jesus Christ. The promise that God is with them. That is what they should remember when they're discouraged. When we're discouraged, we should remember that God is with us. Just think over that for a moment. God is with us. Someone, someone who is with you is concerned about how you feel, about how you're doing. Otherwise, they would leave. They're supporting you. They're holding your hand so you're not alone. That should bring you comfort that God is all-powerful and he's with us. So first point, the presence of God. Second point, the power of God. And the third point, the promise of God. Verse 9, the final glory of this house will be greater than the first, says the Lord of armies. I will provide peace in this place. This is a declaration of the Lord of armies. The people wanted to stop the building because it wouldn't be similar to the temple that they remember. They think about building the temple with their own strength. They think about building the temple as their work, but not partnering with God to build God's temple. It is like a relay race. If you are focused on one part of the race, you may miss the different legs of the race that bring the whole race together. One wrong part or part not executed does not mean you lose the race. You could very well still win the race. One discouragement or disappointment does not mean that you should stop the race, but it means you should continue. It is like the building of cars at a factory. So the building of cars is the job of the manufacturer. The different people and machines are just partnering in the work with the manufacturer to build the vehicle. At the end of the production line, the glory goes to the manufacturer for the pro production of the vehicle. This should be the same for us. We are partnering with God to build the kingdom of God. It's not our kingdom to build. It's God's kingdom. So we ought to just get on with the building and not be distracted by how others are building or distracted by things that are stopping us from building. So I'd say don't look at David or Tandiwa teaching the kids and think that you could not do that. Ask them to show you how. Ask them to lead and guide you. I'll say, don't look at Rudolph and think, I would, not make, mis I would make mistakes and not be able to, pr to do things well. No, God is with you. Join him. Ask them how, how you could do it. Don't look at San Maria and think, I can't harmonize like that. You don't need to. You just need to sing to God. Don't look at others like Curry discipling others and, and seeing fruit in their other, other people's lives and not seeing fruit when you're discipling someone. No. Continue the work of kingdom building. If there are initiatives the church is using to grow the kingdom of God, join those initiatives. Ask when and ask how. Partner as we partner together to build the kingdom of God. The final glory of this house will be greater than the first. John 2 verse 9 says, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. So the original temple was a way for people to encounter God. Jesus speaks of a temple in John that will be dis destroyed and it will, be re it will rise again in three days. The temple is himself, his body. He will die on the cross for you and me. On the third day, he rises up and what more, imp and what more importantly, he, he will rise up with us if we have put our faith and trust in him. The power of God would raise Jesus up to conquer death. The power of God will bring peace. Jesus preached peace in his first coming to Jews and Gentiles. We, will, we see this in Ephesians. If you are a believer and trust in the blood of Jesus shed for you, then you have peace with God. Peace with one another. However, true and lasting peace will come when Jesus returns when we see the final glory of the house of God. 
as we close, it is hard to persevere when, it, when it's so much easier to chill, to change your mind, or to stop. God, through the prophet Haggai, is giving us a, a poster of perseverance of, and, and perspective. God is with us. The power we ought to rely on is the power of God because he is with us. Understanding that God is with us should help us to persevere, to remember that in the crushing or in the pressing of life, God is molding us into the image of God. God is making us into what he wants us to be. So persevere to build the kingdom of God or start if you have not been building the kingdom of God because you can rely on the power of God to do so. To keep strengthening our faith is important to help us to persevere and to keep seeing the right perspective. So we need to read the Bible. We need to be in community. We need to let the gospel in others and the gospel as we read it and shape us. That is how we become more and more like Christ. God promised that he is with us. The Israelites ought to just continue the work of God. He is with them. We ought to continue. And some of us start the work of God where he's placed us. We can rely on him to help us. What are those things in which you need to persevere and build the kingdom of God? If you can think of something, I would encourage you to tell someone so that you are not walking alone that there's someone who's walking with you and holding you accountable. If you cannot think of something, I would encourage you to tell someone also. Maybe that might help to think through and plug into the spaces to build the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can rely on your power. We thank you that You are building your kingdom and we are partnering with you. We thank you that we can trust that you will continue to be with us as we build your kingdom. Help us to focus on you. We pray that as you may be speaking to us, challenging us, speaking into our hearts, that you would enable us to not grieve the Holy Spirit but that we would hear your call to be more and more like Christ in all that we do, to partner in the work of kingdom building. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.